So you say that you're the Messiah. Why won't you save yourself and us? Don't you fear God? Even when you've been sentenced to die, we deserve to die for our crimes. But this man, this, this man's done nothing wrong. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. love couldn't 
each one of us, God. And for that, we are forever indebted, Lord. God, but tonight, in the most humble way that we know how, God, we worship you and we praise you, Father, for sending your son for us, our perfect and precious gift. darkness of new day those of us who loved him stood on the hill before his cross and my son John was the only one of his men who braved arrest and I couldn't keep the fear from welling up in my heart that the soldiers would grab my son forcefully stretch him out on another cross drive nails through his hands and his feet. Let him die too. Was this to be the cup that Jesus asked if they could partake? I wondered as John held me and Mary. At Jesus' birth, a prophet named Simeon warned Mary that a sword would pierce her heart. I stood on that hill before his cross and I watched her watch her firstborn, her promised child, hanging, bloodied and torn on a criminal's cross. There was blood pouring down his face from the crown of thorns that was pressed cruelly into his flesh. It was pouring from the wounds torn gaping and wide from the flogging falling on Mary. He was dying. And we heard him cry out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And I looked up into his face, and I had never in all my life seen such agony and such sorrow. I tried to comfort her. She's watching her son. As we laid him in the tomb, Mary repeated the words that Gabriel, the angel, had given her so many years ago. He shall live forever, and his kingdom will never end. El Shaddai, our holy God, he keeps his promises. And we held to that as we held each other. He shall live forever. Christ suffered for me and you. He committed no sin. No deceit was found in his voice. When they hurled their insults him, at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on that cross so that you and I might die to sin and live in righteousness. By his wounds have you and I been healed. Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now Joseph had been a follower of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jews, like me. A 
The time of decision had come. He could no longer walk in favor with both God and our leaders. He had to choose. And he chose Jesus. I could no longer waver between two opinions. I had to choose. And I chose Jesus. I brought a mixture of myrrh to anoint my king. And aloes, though those wounds no human hands would soothe. Why did I wait so long? God, why did I wait until you were dead? Passover was upon us. We laid his body in the garden in a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. In the ultimate act of servanthood, Christ died in my place and in your place. But death was a beginning. The high priests and elders posted their guard. But death had no power over him. I had seen my brother restored to life. We were about to see just how much power Christ had. Nothing in all of creation could stop the Son of God. Not a word was heard from the tomb that day Just shuffling soldiers' feet As they guarded the grave One day, two days, three days had passed Could it be that Jesus the Father has forsaken him, turned his back on our son, despising our sin. Oh, hell, send a whisper, just forget him, he's dead. Then the Father looked down to his son.
near my home in Bethany, he wrote his hands and blessed us. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all of creation. Make disciples of every nation. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything that I've commanded you. Whoever believes in me will be saved. But whoever does not will be condemned. Surely I will be with you always to the very ends of the age. I love you all. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. While he was blessing us, he was taken up into heaven. We, re we, returned to, we returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Disciples went to all the nations making disciples in all walks of life. No matter what someone had done or what someone had been, they found new life. I had been a sheep who had gone astray, but I returned to the good shepherd and overseer of my soul. Jesus, the good shepherd, is waiting to receive any who wish to come to him. Come now. Maybe this is the first time that you've heard the story of Jesus, the servant king. Maybe you never knew that he was willing to suffer for you, to die for you. Maybe like me, you've been looking for earthly answers and earthly powers. But lasting answers and lasting powers only come from heaven, come from Jesus. He will save you this very night. Come to him. Don't you wait too long. Now is your day of decision. Don't let what others think stop you from coming to the one who loved you enough to die for you. Come to him. Maybe you believe that the Christ has risen and declared him to be the Son of God who's come into the world. But maybe your love has grown dim or cold or died out altogether. Jesus has the power to bring the dead back to life. Let that power wash over you tonight. Come to him. Maybe you once followed him, but you fell away. If he could restore me, if he could welcome me, a man who denied him, then he can restore you. Not only he can, he will. There is more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than 99 who do not need to him. Come to him to be restored. Come now while we sing. As we have walked through the story of the life of Jesus Christ this evening, we have witnessed as he met the needs of many people, some who sought him out and some who had never even heard of him until the very moment they saw him. For example, Peter. Peter denied him, but Jesus forgave him. 
Salome. She had looked the world over for answers only to find them right in front of her. She found them in Jesus. Nicodemus learned that the way he lived wasn't good enough to earn heaven as his eternal home. He learned that you must be born again and you must surrender your life to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. In this play, many people from many different walks of life and many different needs found their answers. Their answers were found in Jesus Christ. I wonder, are the people in the pews tonight really all that different from the people that were on the stage? No, I think not. I think every one of us can find ourselves in one of the characters in this production. I believe that many of you tonight that are sitting in these pews have needs that are weighing you down. And it's likely that there are people here who have been looking for answers all over the world and coming up empty. Friend, the answer is Jesus. And he is here. This world will deal you some pretty rough situations. But Jesus is the answer. He is our hope. He is our Savior. He is here. Will you come to him tonight? I want you to think about this question. Have you allowed Jesus to touch your life? I mean, not just kind of by passing by, but to really touch your life. Have you allowed him to come in and make a difference in your life? Not just by hearing about him, but have you truly opened up your heart and invited the Lord of all into your life? Have you been washed in the blood of Jesus? Have you surrendered your all? Not just your here in this very moment, but your all, your now, and your forever. If you've done this, I believe you already know it, but if you haven't, I believe that you know that too. Listen, do you hear it? I do. Many hearts in this room are crying out for help. And Jesus is the answer. I'm going to ask you if you will just to bow your heads, please. If you're here tonight, and you saw yourself in one of the characters in this play, and tonight you would like to receive the touch of Jesus like so many did, in this play and you have never surrendered your all to him and tonight you want that to change while every head is bowed and every eye is closed I'm just going to ask you to stand right now and just come and stand up here with me don't wait and worry about anybody else is doing you just come right over thank you others just get up and come come on don't worry and don't wait you just come and you stand right up here with me thank you come Others, just come on. Don't wait. I want to pray for you all. Lord Jesus, you see these that have come tonight to receive the wonderful gift of salvation, the touch of you that we all need. And Lord Jesus, I ask you now, this very night, this moment, I ask you, Lord, to do what only you can do and grant the gift of salvation to these here. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your faithfulness. In your name I pray. Amen.
precious blood has washed away the stain. So sing to Jesus, sing to Jesus, sing to Jesus, and live like a new. And remember when you walk, sometimes we fall. So fall on Jesus, fall on Jesus, fall on Jesus, and live. Sometimes the way it's deep and filled with pain. So if your sky is dark and pours the rain, then cry to Jesus, cry to Jesus, cry to Jesus, and Pray with me. Father, we thank you so much for the wonderful gift of salvation that you have granted here tonight. We thank you for the gift of your son. We thank you, Father, that in our weakness, while we were yet sinners in our worst, Christ died for us. And tonight we celebrate the risen Savior. He is not dead. He is alive. And we thank you for the wonderful gift of your son. And tonight, this congregation praises you. We thank you. We seek you. And just because we're close to the end of this service doesn't mean that we're closing you off. We need you every minute of every day. And Lord, as we part from here in a few minutes, remind us, Lord, that you will never leave us and you will never forsake us. And that you are with us always. And may, we, may we walk with confidence, trusting you and knowing that you're always an ever-present help in times of need, in times of trouble. Thank you again. In your name we pray. Thank you.